Hello friends, welcome to Monday Musing and today we're going to be going into the second hermetic principle. Last week we talked about the all is mind and today we're going to be talking about the law of correspondence as above, so below, so within, so without. So what does that actually mean? Because we hear this phrase, we hear it in uh, law of attraction circles, we hear it from occultists such as Alistair Crowley And it's something that's kind of bandied around a lot. Um, But what does it mean to us as people? How can understanding the principle of correspondence help us be better people, help us to be better members of our communities, better members of our families? How can it help us with work? How can it help us with our healing journey? And I've got a little bit of a diagram to help explain this in more detail. So... From last week, we we know that I'm in a little bit of teacher mode today, so just <laughs> you'll have to just bear with me. I wish I could put this on the wall. I might have to get this whiteboard on the wall at some point, but I'll try and keep it still there. So at the top, actually, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's start with this. Right, at the top we have all is mind. So this is what we were talking about last week. So we were talking about the divine intelligence, the, the God Uh, as religion would call it, spirit as I would call it, the infinite intelligence that runs this reality. And then underneath that infinite intelligence, we have what's called the astral plane, where our astral bodies live. Um, It's known as the astral matrix or the 4D reality. And this is where things, um, when people say about past, present and future existing simultaneously at once, it would exist on, on, on this realm and there is a higher and lower aspect of this realm. So on the higher aspect of this realm, those initiate initiates or saints, they have the ability to be in, uh, people say that initiates and saints can be in different places at different times because they can send their astral bodies to those places so they can be doing work in the physical realm and then on, a, on an astral level, they can sort of detach their body and uh, move it to another physical location so that's why in history you'll hear of saints working in different places so that that's and that's why i believe saints are i believe that they are they are initiates and that's why they have the halo over their head because that's the golden aura and we're going to discuss auras later on and how we can um know about other people's auras and how our auras and our characters affect our outside reality as well but going back to the astral matrix it always it also contains a lower dimension now in the lower dimension contains different um, entities and energies that like to feed off human energy and human humans become food you know we become food for them so i'm just going to read you one of these little beans and what it says, what Franz Bardon has to say about these little creatures. There is also another kind of being, the so-called lavi, which are called into existence through the astral matrix, intentionally or unintentionally, by intense emotional thinking. They are not actual beings, but merely forms which keep themselves alive from the passions of the animalistic world on the lower level of the astral plane. They're Their instinct for self-preservation takes them into the sphere of those human beings whose passions attract them. They attempt to awaken and call forth directly or indirectly the passions which lie dormant in the human being. Should these forms be successful in enticing the individual to a passion which is to their liking, then they nourish, maintain and strengthen themselves from the innation which is the passion bring forth from this person one who is laden with many passions brings with him a host of lavi into the lower spheres of his astral plane and a big struggle ensues with these lavi. All right, guys, so just think about some of it. So we've been talking in the past, if, you're, if you've been following this channel for a while, we've been talking about parts, patterns and programs. So if you think about the parts, so you have this huge passion part, right, okay? And then the um, the part, the pattern is that you... you um, you masturbate a lot and you watch pornography which would be then be the program so think about how 
if you think about what the parasites might that be behind the scenes might be doing intentionally to call forth the lavi into this reality think about what pornography does and i know pornography is a big self soother to some people but there was an article out a couple of weeks ago about how Pornhub has used child trafficking in some of their videos. So that should be a really big reason, um, a good enough reason to give up to give up that that habit if you can and work with the part of yourself which is enticing these lavy beans into reality. So if we just move back down, so that's the so that's the astral matrix where your astral body is kept, and we want to be working on the higher levels of this astral matrix. We don't want our astral body just covered in lavi. We want and bringing that down to earth. We want our astral body to be able to be pure and 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 I'm not saying perfect, but we we want to purify it. So that's what they say in spirituality when they talk about purification. This is this is the reason why. Okay, so that, that, that would be the above. And then the below would be the human being. And the human, I never know which way to go with this. I need to stick this on the wall, really. And the human being consists of the five elements. So ether, fire, water, air, and earth. So in the human body, as above, so below, we also have these elements. So the ether is carried in uh, blood and semen. So another reason, guys, for not be just giving away your semen to things, to the lavi, to Pornhub. It's a great reason because it contains your spirit, your ether. And then fire would be in the head, water would be in the abdomen and air would be in the chest. And think about what air is. Air air is the bridge between um the so air in the heart the fire in the head the water in the belly it's the bridge so air is made out of fire fire and water that's how air is made and it's also the the bridge think about the bridge when i was talking about the bridge the heart being the bridge to spirituality into those higher planes so that is why air is living in 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 the chest and then as we know all is mind and all his mind is also on the in our parts as well so we are not just um we don't have this all his mind here we also have an all his mind here which is then split into many parts so as somebody very um wisely pointed out in the alchemy academy group which is my group on facebook which i'll leave the link to join in the description below they pointed out that um our parts we, we are the self so self energy is the god to our parts so this is the 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 big g and then this would be like the little g so we have many parts and many different aspects and sometimes you remember because parts live in our subconscious mind so we've spoken about this we have the conscious mind and the subconscious mind and the parts are living in the subconscious mind in the shadow and the and the subconscious mind uses sim, um, symbology so when you work with parts, it, sometimes they, they, they might be, you might be male, but you might have female parts. You might be female and you might have male parts. You might have little children in there. You might just have big squiggles and shapes and objects or, you know, this was supposed to represent um, anger. Um, and, you know, sometimes you have clouds. Sometimes, you know, the, the, the subconscious mind works in images and pictures. And um, sometimes it works in animals. So, and remember that, that the, the, the parasites that be understand this. So this is why I'm trying to, to, to help you understand this as well, because this is really, really important. So the more that we work with these guys, the more that we can turn them from their extreme roles into their non-extreme roles. So I'm gonna show you, and the reason why this is so important is because um, your subconscious mind and your inner world is what's going to make your character with the outside world. Your character is what creates your aura and your aura is what's interacting with other people. So we have the as above, so below scenario here, which I've explained already. And then we have so, so within, so without. So this is how, how we react to the outside world is, is how our character is formed. So our character also consists of the elements and I'm going to show you a really good diagram here, which I 
So here are our four main characters, which consist of our parts and elements. So when you look at these, try not to look at strengths or weaknesses and think that weaknesses are something bad. It's just what I would call its extreme role. So it's weaknesses when that part or aspect of ourselves or that element is in its extreme role. So it can always be transformed into its non-extreme role. And through that transformation process, through that alchemical process can become some of our deep learning and our deep wisdom. So let's just go through these. We have, first we have the sanguine who is ruled by air. So these are great actors, salespeople and speakers and their strengths, they're sociable, charismatic, outgoing, confident, warm hearted and their weaknesses can be they are impulsive, impulsive, shameless, forgetful. Um, They may talk too much. They may control the conversation. They may be too loud. And then we have our choleric characters and these are ruled by the element of fire. So these tend to be our builders in life, our leaders, our producers and their strength, that fire energy is great for ambition, for passion, for focus, for efficiency, for practical planning and problem solving and their weaknesses is that because they have that fire element because they have that inner fire within that they can be aggressive they can be domineering they can be inflexible and impatient rude tactless you can read the list here for yourselves guy and guys and i'll put this in the community tab as well because it's a really really great resource so then we move on to the phlegmatic um characters and these tend to this is ruled by water and these tend to be our diplomats, our accountants, our teachers, our technicians. And their strength is that they are relaxed, quiet, um, they're content, they're kind, they're consistent, they're accepting, they're diplomatic. On the downside or when they're in their extreme role, as I would call it, they can sometimes be fearful of uh, change, they can be lazy, they can be stubborn, they can be passive aggressive, indecisive, pessimistic. And then we move on to the melancholic type of character, which is um, earth, earthbound, it's earth related. And these are our artists, these are our musicians, our inventors, our philosophers and our doctors. And their strengths are they're thoughtful, they're considerate, they're great planners, um, they're highly creative people. But their weaknesses is they can be too obsessive, they can be too cautious, they can be prone to depression moodiness can be perfectionist and you can see that um, may perhaps different parts have different um, characters so you'll be able to when you do some deep uh, parts work you'll be able to see what different characters that that your parts have as well because I can see that my um, my creative um, aspect is very very melancholic it's very very melancholic in fact some of my most creative stuff I always says comes from my sadness so I never move away from sadness I actually quite enjoy the process of sadness I know that sounds a little strange but I always find that I'm really creative when I'm sad but I have to balance with that with not staying stuck in it and then I can see that you know my teacher side is is the is the is the phlegmatic side um, and it's you know it likes to teach but I also have some sanguine in there that likes to be outgoing and likes to do my YouTube channel and likes to connect with people so you can see that different parts of yourself have different characters but you'll see that maybe perhaps you overall fit in one or two of these characters and I think the role of um, you know an initiate or, or a saint as I was saying earlier because the, the reason why I'm using the word saint is because they're depicted in religion to have the halo around the head right and the reason why they have that halo is because their aura is, is is lighting up and I think the reason for that is because they are balanced in all four elements or five elements as well if we include the all is mind so the ether so that would be the fifth element so you can see here where your work is is needed to be done where do you need to balance your fire your air your earth and your water i know for me i definitely need a little bit more fire and a little less earth so just see where you fit into that it's a really good practice to do and then take a look at where your parts fit into that as well so that's um something else to do all right, I hope that's helped. So if you remember, we have the all is mind at the top, but then we have the, the astral realm where everything is creative and that is split into a higher and lower. So the astral realm has its 
extreme role and its non-extreme role. So you, can you start to see how it's the macrocosm is in the microcosm? So the macrocosm of of um, the astral realm with its with its higher and its lower realm is at the extreme and the non and the non-extreme which is also inside our parts so as that very wise uh, member of the alchemy academy said it's the it's the big g and then the little g so when we are in self energy we are in a place of being in that big big g place to uh, to our little g's inside inside of us so what is self energy well self energy is calm it's confident it's compassionate it's creative it's curious it's connected it's it's conscious you know it's aware so just remember that that self energy that self that on that um that healed aspect of ourselves that lives inside of us is always present because the divine intelligence lives inside of us right so I just I find this stuff fascinating. But what I was what I've been um, looking at this week is because um, right now we have in the collective we have the big fear of the coronavirus. So I have this book. It's, and I know I'm giving you a lot of book recommendations, guys, lately. But I'm really enjoying reading at the moment. But this is a fantastic book for any people that are you know um, are practitioners if you're in the healing healing arts and you are a practitioner I definitely recommend you get this book if you are a, a metaphysical student I definitely recommend you get this book it's fantastic but what I was looking at is I was looking at what she has to say about lungs because obviously the coronavirus is associated with the lungs so it's really interesting interesting what she has to say so I'm just going to read it to you again so if the lungs had a voice, it would often be cheery and happy. If they are quiet and seem like they are hiding, then it's because their owner is storing a lot of grief, old sorrow, anxiety or depression or even repressed fears. So what is the whole coronavirus? It's fear, 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 fear. The lungs have a need to express emotions when, when they are detective. If sad and grief is stored for long periods of time, then it can physically cause a great deal of pain, dis physical pain and discomfort. The lungs are signaling to you that you need to deal with your stuff. So what do we collectively need to deal with? We need to deal with our stuff. And whether this virus is, is man-made and been inserted into the matrix or it is, you know, a, a natural born pathogen, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not God, so I don't have the answers to that. But whatever it is, there is one thing that we need to deal with in this reality and it's our own individual stuff. So this is, this is interesting what it says next. And bearing in mind, think about where coronavirus started in, it started in, um, in China where they did the, the uh, 5G um, trials. Inhaling toxins from your environment causes damage to the lungs as well, especially if you already have an existing emotional problem such as grief, depression or feelings suppressed. It causes the lung to be oversensitive towards foreign substances. Inhaling toxins could trigger an already emotionally existing problem, thereby causing a physical illness. You may feel the need to protect yourself as no one else will, hence the to toilet roll wars. You feel safe with your own company and you are strict in regard to who is allowed into your life. Think about the coronavirus. Nobody wants to go near each other anymore because they're being strict and controlled of who they allow in their life. You avoid people, quarantine at home, who might cause more stress. When a person is feeling sad, the lungs often tighten up. When a person feels scared, the lungs also tighten up and feel squeezed. When a person feels angry, the breath becomes shallow. Even depression can add strain and stress to the lungs. Sometimes a person's negative emotion, uh, emotions have been there for so long that they're not even aware of the physical strain and tensions that may be presented in the lungs. The, lung, uh, the lungs also suffer when a person is in a state of shock. So if this is a man-made virus, they understand that if they shock, they shock people then the lungs will suffer, right? So this is why you need to understand metaphysics because the parasites that be, they, they know this stuff like, like, you can, like most of you can probably read English. 
So you may you may take shallow breaths and not use the full capacity of your lungs. People store their grief and fear in the lungs. You might be expecting the worst case scenario, always holding your breath in anticipation. You may have experienced trauma related to a near-death experience. Well, they're, they're practically putting that program into the collective that everybody's going to die right now. Could also be ancestral or have a fear of being separated from someone that you once feel safe with. You know, our human family, we feel safe when we're with our human family and we're being separated from them. You were never sure when you were safe and when the next mood swing in the household was going to strike. Now, I will say the household is the government and that, you know, they're being the, the, they're being the narcissistic parent right now. And, 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 um, it's almost like they're kind of passing on some enmeshment trauma, which is the tr trauma when a child, um, suffers from when they pick up their parents' stuff. You keep yourself small. Interesting. And took shallow breaths with the intention of avoiding conflict. Oh, very interesting. As a result of feeling unsafe during childhood, you overcompensate by feeling overly aggressive. You feel the need to protect your territory and identity. Look, this is, the work, this is how they're going to shut down foreign travel. It has also challenged you to reclaim what you, what you feel you have lost during childhood. You may also have had to deal with conflict in your life for a long period of time, as we all do in the trauma matrix. And you had, and you've had enough. You need to escape and get away from the circumstances that are causing you to feel suffocated. You feel powerless to stand your ground. That's why I always encourage people to be grounded so that you can stand your ground. Trauma related to toxicity that a person inhales is stored here as well, it, which is basically the whole media right now. It is important to explore how you've felt at the time of inhaling in to toxins along with how the toxins affected you if this is relevant did you smoke work in polluted areas or live in a house where others smoked no but we're all living in a world of 5g right now which is completely polluting our whole environment a person's ability to emphasize with others can be too sensitive often leaving them with heavy feelings in their chest think that's especially um bernard gunther wrote in his article about um, media and how the fear um penetrating the auric field which i think especially relates to that sentence that i've just read of being too sensitive because we get really um you know if we're programming ourselves with the news all the time or our friends or family are then yeah we do become sensitive to it Especially after talking to someone that was grieving, feeling upset or suffering from depression, this interactions with others may trigger your own suppressed emotions, often related to ancestral trauma. So that's the collective trauma that we've also got on on a collective level. It is important to be able to identify when you are feeling someone else's emotions or your own. So is it the, your own fear of the coronavirus or is it your family, friends, colleagues or the collective? Issues with the lung surface as depression and avoiding connecting with others. What are we doing now? We don't connect with each other anymore. And that's one of the aspects of self-energy that I was talking about early. Connection, connection. It's really, really important. It creates an illusion where you feel a need to be isolated from others. And what is this coronavirus doing? It's, it's quarantining us from each other. So I'll just put that book up again. So it's a really, really, really great book, especially if you're a practitioner to work with your clients and just be able to give them um, some metaphysical understanding, understanding of um, physical needs that they might have. So guys, I hope you have got something from that. So just remember that we have the all is mind and we have the astral the uh, matrix ash, uh, the astral matrix underneath that and then we have our physical human body and all its elements the elements also live in all the other the ash, uh, the astral matrix as well they also live in our parts so remember that we are that self energy is our our god to our parts and that infinite intelligence is is also what religion would describe as god so god's just really divine intelligence it's not this man in the sky but humans like to personify things so that they're because remember when i was saying about the subconscious mind needs imagery to understand things so the reason why god's depicted as a man in the sky is so that the 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 conscious mind can understand what it is so that's that's the only reason but it's something that we can 
understand with our conscious mind or even begin to describe really so yeah I hope that was helpful for you thank you for your time because your time is your currency in this reality and I hope I've given you something of valuable valuable and um, thank you for spending it with me as well and I wish you well in this crazy matrix this week you know guys just try and stay calm you know get physical exercise get some good food do your work stay centered stay grounded get out in nature nature's the you know she's the mother of all healers so that's my advice for this week so i will see you next week guys bye for now